everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to work on some of the Harry Potter party stuff I think this is going to probably be the first video that you see because it is the invitations and if you're gonna start a Harry Potter party you got to start with the invitations so I will show you um, first of all that I got everything from a free printable I'm going to link the free printable a link to the free printable in the description box of this video <laughs> and I will show you what I was able to get and um, how they look so the template sort of comes like this and what you do is you have the opportunity to personalize this section here um, it says and let me get my glasses I have them ready it says, it's got a crest, a Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme. Oh, it does say Mugwump. I, I really didn't know it, if it was spelt right. International, I'm hope, glad it's spelt right. I didn't proofread it before I put it, but I, anyway, um, International Confederation of Wizards. And then this one is to Lisa. So it says, Dear Miss Cologne, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in addition to the celebration of Miss Jerry Ann Henson's 50th birthday party. Please find and close the list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins July 11th. We await your owl no later than July 10th because that's when Lisa's getting there. So my sisters say something a little different. The other template that they had, which you can probably could figure out a way to make it a printable is the envelope and but I'm gonna hand I'm gonna hand address them I think I have two envelopes that ended up being on cardstock you just double check that that's correct um, because just because I didn't have enough paper so it's a little bit different color and it's obviously gonna be a little firmer but they're not going to be addressed for the post office um hogwarts hogwarts maybe i shouldn't do this this time of night hogwarts has a seal as most of you know i was gifted a seal <laughs> by and it moved me it moved me so um i do have sealing wax however i don't have any red which is traditional but when i read the first book or re heard the first book recently it actually said that the sealing wax was purple but it's always been represented as red so i don't know um did i did they read me the wrong copy i don't really know but i wanted to show you these are already printed so i'm going to show you how i'm going to fold them i'm going to work on the envelopes we're going to use our best hogwarts type calligraphy um <laughs> And then we're going to create the mailing system. So in the wizarding world, things are delivered by owl. That's why it said, I will expect your owl, owl no later than the July 10th, in Lisa's case. And at the Dollar Tree, I found these three set of six um, little woodland creatures, wood creatures, and there are two owls in each one. So because there are six, well, technically five guests to my party, because I'm not getting one, um, <laughs> I should though, um, I'm going to paint five owls and we're going to use that. I'm going to send them off in little tiny like bubble envelopes. So um, it's really funny. It's bringing me back because this was how I made my wedding invitations. I had a Renaissance type wedding, a Renaissance style wedding, and I had all of my own I made my all of my own wedding invitations, the envelopes that were personalized, and then most of the people who lived locally, no, everybody who lived locally, we hand delivered their letters, their invitations, but anybody who lived away, we stuck them the invitation into like a bubble envelope and mailed them off. So it was a lot of fun, and that's what this reminds me of. It's 20 years ago, so <laughs> It's nostalgic, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. I am so happy that you're here with me. And I hope that you guys have good reports about a great birthday by the time you're watching this. So, 
Let's get into it. Hey, sweetheart. Hopefully that was a soothing way to start the video. Just listening to me cut paper, just so relaxing. Um, I Putting this in real time, as the title says, and I know this is an hour long video, but it's really like, I just really wanted to show you the process that goes into the love of making invitations by hand. It's high speed at the end. So it's been, it was the project was a little bit longer than an hour, probably like an hour and a half. But, and it was only six invitations. So you can imagine if you're going to do this on a grander scale, get help or start, uh, you know, really early or just allot yourself the time. Um, it's definitely a labor of love. I will tell you, as I mentioned, that this is a really old <laughs> parchment paper. They do still sell it. So if I can remember to link it in the description box below as well, in case you're interested. This is in copper. I also had it in uh, ivory originally that's what we used for when we were getting married um, I want to thank the lady from Pinterest who shared this free printable um, check the description box down below I will ask if you give me a little couple of days grace I might not get a chance to do uh, the link right away but um, if you're watching this way in the future then you'll probably have the opportunity to get the link um, that's it. And, uh, I'm not using a bone folder or anything. This is a little bit thicker paper. I believe it's like, um, it's, uh, tw a 27, 28 weight, maybe 20. It's thicker than regular, um, printer paper. Uh, but it's not super, super like hard stock or cover stock. Um, so I'm not needing like a bone folder. I'm just using my finger and I'm also not sealing the envelope before the sealing wax. Um, just letting the sealing wax do that as well. If you feel like you need extra hands or you don't want to use the sealing wax or you get sealing wax that stickers, like some, sometimes you can actually get the sealing wax that are like little stickers already, then you can go ahead and use just like a regular school glue stick. You know, those are the best things to use on these type of paper crafts. Just make sure you don't go over. Um, where the tab will be because then you'll accidentally get it on your envelope but I will tell you I'm glad I didn't seal them because what I'm not showing you here is I created a list it was actually the list from the books of every year Harry started school he got a, a supply list that he was to bring um, depending on what that year's studies was and I'll show it to you at the end when my sister opens hers okay now, if you don't have artistic skills or you don't, you're confident in your artistic skills, obviously you could create any owls that you want. I actually found a really great pin on Pinterest where it's just a paper owl that you cut out of a circle and you can fold it a special way that it can hold 
your letter as well, which is really cute. But just do your research. You can actually do like a printable owl. You could do decoupage on these. This would be like a really cute way to do that as well. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm looking up um, the lettering that was specific to the outside of the envelope. The inside of the envelope, uh, we put the inside of the letter, we put the Harry Potter font, even though that wasn't what was on the inside of his envelope. I mean, you know, like what was on his original Hogwarts letter. Um, we just used Harry Potter font. But then what we did was there was kind of a specific writing to the outside of the envelope. And I wanted to kind of mimic that. I did have a little trouble because my calligraphy marker disappeared on me. Um, so I tried to use this brush marker from the Dollar Tree and it just was too, the tip was just not sturdy enough to get like clean straight lines, in my opinion, for me, with my steadiness and my eyes and the whole thing. So I went in and I switched it up to use just a an ultra fine Sharpie. I don't know if you guys know this, random fact, but regular Sharpies are actually called fine Sharpies. And the little skinny pencils are called ultra fine Sharpies. So this, not pencils, pen like things. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw her, uh, write her name out. It's usually like it was Mr. H Potter in the movie or in the books. Um, we're just gonna, I'm gonna put their first initial. So it's like Miss J Adams. Um, and then Harry Potter lived in a cupboard under the stairs when he got his first letter to Hogwarts. So what I did was I went and put everybody's bedroom location um, as well, just to be fun. Um, you don't have to do that. You don't may not know when your guests living in their houses. But um, and then some people really do just address everybody's at cupboard under the stairs. So like uh, you'll put the child's name and then cupboard under the stairs or the adult's name and cupboard under the stairs with the fake address. Because if you're gonna send these with an owl in a mailer, you could put whatever address you want on that outside of the envelope, okay? Now, um, I also didn't share with you at the end, um, but I will share it with you, um, that I also decided to, how did I decided to attach the owls. Uh, also, because I didn't do these early enough because I had trouble finding the extra owls. I don't know if you guys have been following along. <laughs> but I actually had to send these all like priority mail or else they wouldn't have got them before they all got on the planes, um, which wasn't a big deal. Um, but ironically enough, I sent the two of them two day mail because they were coming. My sisters are coming on Wednesday and uh, the other two I sent via um, the other three I sent via just priority mail and <laughs> The two people, three people who got priority mail actually got them before the people who got the two day. It was weird. I don't know. But maybe that's where they live, I guess. I hope. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not going to show you her address. Um, so we're just going to skip over that. And then we're going to get on to um, sealing it, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. So we find the coordinating letter. And we need to fold it so it fits in there. So it looks like if we fold it in thirds. Thirds is like my favorite, isn't it? Isn't thirds your favorite? It'd be cool if I did this because then it would show up. Like a lot of times when we used to do mailings for hospitals, it would be on special letterhead. And then fold it in half one more time like this. And I'm sure it will fit right in. Now... Just like an actual like medieval type letter, there won't be any glue on here. It will just be the sealing wax. Now, if you've never used sealing wax before, the best, 100% best way to melt sealing wax is with a heat gun. I have mentioned this once, I've mentioned it 5,000 times. My heat gun got destroyed in the flood. So, I also said that it's supposed to be red, but I only have gold because that's what I have left over. So we're just gonna actually just melt it with a flame. Now there is a um, wick running through it, which technically you're probably supposed to um, light the wick and, but it just makes too, I found that it makes too sooty it's the same reason I don't do it over a candle. Try to get it spread out a little bit. So here's a trick I've learned after doing how many invitations? Eh. 
when I got married, there was a few invitations. Now you want it to actually cool off a little bit. This is so cool. And gave us this. You actually want it to cool off a little bit. And my, don't stick to your envelope. But actually looks, it makes it look authentic. Look, I just stuck to my envelope. Let it sit there until it cools off. No joke. Then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to show you. If you wait, if you wait, eh, it's not quite cool yet, as you can just tell, because I just stuck my thumb in it. There you go. I know it's gold and it's supposed to be red. It's actually supposed to be purple. I could sit there and paint it. I'm not going to. My family will appreciate this. I appreciate this. So I'm not going to do all of those on camera for you because that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's just time consuming. So the next thing I wanted to do is I want to cut open these owls and I want to paint one for you. Now, there are different types of owls in the world. As you know, there's barn owls and spotted owls and horn, great horn owls. But what I wanted to do was to do a couple of different really easy owl DIYs. So let me just make this an extra page. Owl um, images. So when you Google images, there's a thousand different owls to choose from. So say we do a great horned owl. Say we do pick up a picture like this that actually has like a bunch of owls on it. Um, the sky is really, the possibilities are endless. The sky's the limit. All right, so that's a pretty neat picture. This is actually drawings, which actually will work really well. It's from Versa Stock. I don't want to download it. I just want to zoom into it. <sighs> they want me to buy it. I don't want to buy it. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to use this just to give me like an idea of where eyeballs should be and stuff. And I think I'm going to do something really different. I'm going to just take a Sharpie. At least I think it's different. <laughs> Say I'm going to pick for the first one, we'll pick this guy. Okay. So this guy has eyeballs. Yeah, that's horrible. Sharpie isn't going to work. The thin Sharpie might. Try this other guy. I do have extra. That's why we buy extra. So, he's got his eyeballs. Well, there we go. That's much better. If you're not good at drawing, don't worry. I'm not good at drawing right now either. You can always print um, print your picture out and then trace it. You guys know we've done that plenty of times. So for this particular owl, he has like a mask on that's in a light color like this wood. And obviously it looks like a bra. No, I'm just kidding. So it's a mask on. It's not exactly what the owl looks like, but hey, it works for me. We're going to draw in his beak. It's dark. His owl, this owl's got a dark beak. And then what else does he have? He's got shaded on his wings. So this might be where the big marker might come in handy. Or maybe just a regular marker. Let's take a regular Sharpie. Yes. So we'll draw. We're not doing anything fancy, I told you. Um... Yeah, because that worked. <laughs> it's what I meant to do. Let's see. The bottoms of his wings are all black. But we want to make it look like feathers. So you don't want to draw a solid color. You want to make spaces between so it looks like graduated feathers. Right? Now his head has a little bit of distinguishing feathers around there. This one doesn't really have ears, but let's go ahead and make him some black ears. 
and give him like pupils. Okay. Now, what I want to do for this guy, because I want to show you this really easy. I want to take antique wax. I'm going to take it with a brush. No, I don't always use antique wax with a brush. A lot of times I just use it with a, um, like with a rag. And because this is wood grain, I'm going to go around his eyes really, 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 really well, like really close and drag it down, right? Then I want to take my tissue. You guys know I love to like craft with stuff you have laying around the house, right? What are, did my tissues fall down and go boom? Oh boy, where did my tissues go? Tissues! Oh goodness. Where are my tissues? Oh no. Is that because I need a tissue right now? Oh jeepers. Oh. oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind. <sighs> so then I want to take a tissue and I want to like wipe it down. Now it's way too long. I waited way too long, but you want to keep turning the tissue so you don't drag the, the dirty spot right back into the brown. See that? And it's going to give you a light stain look. And then I'm going to do the opposite for the top. We're going to go dip and up 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 let's see i try to do things that don't aren't complicated but look sophisticated complicated if that makes any sense like they look like they could be, it looks like it could be complicated. So the one thing I would like to do is around these yellow pupils, these eyes are pretty dark. He's got beautiful lined eyeliner. He's got beautiful eyeliner on. <laughs> what I like about that is then I get a chance to even them out a little bit, so. Be like, okay, this guy needs to come in a little bit here, and he needs to straighten out a little bit there. See what I'm saying? Okay. And now we're just going to do the same thing. Light, 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 light for the rest of the owl. And the fact that we can do it all shady, so if we can make it really dark on the outside and dark down by the tips, by the wingtips. Okay? As a matter of fact, we can make his wings dark all together. And just um, leave his body light, you know? So, let's see. Now his body is pretty light. It's actually kind of gray toned, but I just want to leave him brown. So there's nothing wrong with making up your own owl either. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay. Okay, so the one thing I didn't do that I didn't leave, I didn't do his feet. Okay. So that is how we're going to make an owl. Now, 
you can, especially since this is antique wax and it dries really, really quickly, we can go ahead and stain the back. Let's get, oh, whoa, 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 champ, where are you going? Sorry about that. We could just make it one solid color, you know. Um, And the edges, yada, yada, yada. Just to make it look finished, you know. Make it look professional. It's professional. It's cute. It's cute. Now I am just going to put the owl in the envelope with the card and I'm going to stick it in the puffy envelope. Um, but you could attach it. I was actually even contemplating like attaching a little ribbon here and a ribbon to the envelope. So when you pull like the owl out, the envelope follows, but I'm just going to leave it like this so that they know they received their owl and that's it. So I really enjoyed sharing this with you. Can't wait to share more with you and I'm going to go get crack a lacking on the rest of these. So actually, that was all the steps. If you don't really want to watch a very long video and listen to me talk the whole time, that was everything except for at the very end, I share my sister opening hers. Um, she recorded it for me, which was so sweet. So Alicia, if you're watching this, haha, you're going to be on this video. Um, but at the end, I also include the letter that I wrote up. I just picked a really elegant looking font to me, like it would have been handwritten by a wizard. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and the other thing that I mentioned earlier that I uh, didn't share on this video is I ended up taking some really thin jute twine. I'd actually gotten it to go with some tags that I got from wish.com. And I used it to actually wrap them up like packages uh so you'll see my sisters when she gets it she opens it um i have the owl sitting in the front of their address and then i um put you know like a baker is not basically like a baker would wrap a box of donuts so i went around three times the wide way around two times over the owl's head and then tied a little bow um in as well so I highly recommend you, if you, if you want to practice your painting skills, this is a great place to start. I actually found a, a Google image that actually was like realistic paintings of owls, almost like what would have been in the Audubon Society book. So those are paintings, but they look almost very realistic. Um, and I found that I wasn't trying to go for realism necessarily. I was just trying to go for like what different owls would look like. Um, I tried to do them, I did five different owls to customize everybody's their own, and I tried to kind of have the owls 
mimic personalities a little bit, I think. Like, I think my sister Jane's owl was very wise. My sister Alicia's owl looks very pure. Lisa and Julie's owls both look very earthy. And Sharon's owl, he's blue and gray, which happens to be Ravenclaw colors, but also, well, not really gray. It's really bronze, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, but really Sharon's colors. <laughs> it's really Sharon's. Um, maybe not gray necessarily. That was the colors from high school. But anyway, um, it just reminded me of her when I saw that owl and I knew that was going to have to be hers. Plus he looks very studious. You'll see. Um, but it's just a matter of like finding ones that you like, finding ones that you think will be easy to paint. Right. I mentioned earlier, if you think that you want to, um, go ahead and use, uh, decoupage you can do a printable owl um, you could basically print it and then put it on foam board if you want it to be like thick and dimensional I'm actually going to paint the backs of these owls too um, so uh, just to give that little extra something now this is Sharon's owl I started with um, and of course always like first of all I I, I mentioned my vision and the arthritis. My painting skills aren't what they used to be. But um, definitely give yourself grace. These are supposed to be handmade. They're not supposed to be perfect. All of my friends and family that are coming uh, to my party are very aware of what's going on with me. So um, I just wanted to do the very best I could. Made sure everybody had a little owl. Made sure everybody got that cute little letter. Okay. All right. Now I'm only going to show you me painting the front. So that was Sharon's. That was the blue and owl. We actually will give him uh, pupils in a little while. But for right now we just gave him white eyes. Uh, the symmetry is okay if it's not even. Like again these aren't supposed to be realistic um, either. So that's important. Um, this is Julie's we're going to make. Uh, no this is Lisa's that we're going to make. Um, and I tried to make like a snowy type owl. I don't know what they're called uh, with the masks. I don't know. I guess I'm not that great. But these are kind of like the easiest ones because they have like if you can draw a heart or trace a heart, you know, like you have his face. His eyes are like commas. You'll see we'll make his eyes will be like upside down teardrops or like commas. Um, and then his eyeballs will be commas inside his eye color. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit of dimension. It was his, uh, the, the inspiration piece was a little darker around the edge of his face um, than the rest of his hood, basically. Um, and then his wings. Again, this is, you can just, you can take this opportunity to be as fun, realistic. You could pick maybe someone's favorite owl, maybe someone's favorite colors, um, I picked Julie and Lisa both have very earthy type owls uh, because first of all, they're both sorted into the same house. And second of all, um, they're both like earth mother type thing. Um, like I said, my sister Jane's, I just feel like he's so wise looking. Uh, Sharon's as well. And then Alicia's like I said, pure as heart, pure at heart as she is. So um, not that the other ladies aren't. I don't know. Am I putting my foot in my mouth? <laughs> So what I'm doing to mix this, believe it or not, is I'm using Waverly's chalk paint and antique wax. I'm actually mixing the antique wax in. I didn't know how it was going to be. I really loved it. Um, I will tell you, though, you should wait for it to dry, to darken. Like you could see here, I'm starting. And then as soon as you go over it twice, it starts to blend. So um, definitely keep that into consideration if you're going to choose to do this um, particular owl. If I'm inspiring you to make this particular owl. I went around all the edges because I painted the backs. I'm not showing you me painting the backs because really I just basically continued their wings around and made their backs whatever side whatever color their shoulders were is what I did their backs I know that, that sounds silly I think the only one who actually has a back that actually makes a difference or paid attention to is one of the inspiration pictures the owl was kind of like turned sideways and looking over his head so I could see what his back looked like a little bit um I wish I had music <laughs> Um, we've been really busy, as you guys know. It's been a whirlwind of purging and organizing. And then on top of that, party planning and guest planning. It's just been 
I love it. It's just so much fun to do. I think my husband is ready for a two week vacation (laughs) from just um, my birthday. (laughs) I think he needs a vacation from my vacation. Um, So I I just, if you're listening, Jim, I love you. Thank you so much for everything. I, I know I mentioned it like 17 times today, but really I can't thank you enough for all that you do. Um, so you can see there, I was talking about how they're like commas almost, uh, or upside down teardrops. Paisley's would probably be the best, the best description. And then I just, a uh, little dark pupils. You can give him a, you could give him a darker beak, but this owl does not have a dark beak. He has just like that, that white over the brown. Okay. And then for the next one we're going to get into is pretty much the same as you could tell, this is the owl that we messed up the eyes in the beginning. I put a a, a Waverly thin Waverly chalk paint uh, layer under on all of this paint, just to give it uh, basically almost like a whitewash, so the grain would come through, but just to give it like a base coat, so that the colors would be natural, their own real colors, if that makes any sense. Um, but this one we're going to do almost the exact same coloring, just it's going to be a different type of owl. Um, so I'm mixing the same amounts of paint. I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax mixed in with the chalk paint. And I can't believe how well it worked. I have to tell you. I said it again. I know I sound like a broken record. This owl is sort of has horns. It's probably your most traditional looking owl. Well, no, I guess Janie's. Maybe Janie's was the most traditional looking owl. Or maybe Julie's. I don't know. One of them. No, this is Julie's. Never mind. <laughs> Forgive me. So this is Julie's. And it actually has a little bit more of gray undertones than the brown undertones. That's what's happening. I I just, I need a nap. Um, so this uh, has a very similar face. We're going to do the heart-shaped white face. The a little bit deeper, darker uh, paisleys for the eyes. And they kind of connect a little bit more like a unibrow. Um, and then the same eyeballs in there as well. You know, um, owls are mainly nocturnal. So a lot of times they have their eyes closed during the day anyway. <laughs> but not always. But, you know, they kind of like they're cool and they're chilling and the shade and the whole bit. So, um, yeah. <laughs> like I said, my inspirations were drawing, so forgive me if it doesn't look realistic that was not what my was going for so this is not a tutorial on how to paint owls um so his eyes are kind of like uh again commas or parentheses parentheses yeah because there's two of them no not even quotation marks (laughs) they are like apostrophes sorry about that um And I uh, just added a little bit of the extra, like, sort of white mixed with gray, uh, just to give him more dimension in his face. And I thought he looked really cute. I didn't do anything special to his horns like I did for Janie's. Janie's had, like, colored ears. Uh, I didn't do anything special for his ears. I just left them um, the same gray color as his feathers. Okay? And again, just added the blending, the shading, and the dimension. Just wanted it to be special. Again, I painted his back, but I'm not going to show you that because that takes too much time. Now we're going to give Sharon's owl a little bit of uh, pupils in his eyes. Not well because I didn't wait for the paint to dry all the way, but we'll do what we can. I know it's patience. Patience is sometimes I have it. Sometimes I do not. Sometimes I do not. Uh, My father says you never have time to do it right the first time, but you always have time to do it again. We call them popisms. Famous quotes by Pete Adams. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I'm just going to give him a bit, a bit of highlights in his eyes. Just because I really like. Made him look like he's on something. So, um, Which is ironic because Sharon doesn't even drink soda. Um, okay. So then the last owl that we're going to show you here today is Alicia's. It's a snowy white owl. It just has very, very pale gray um highlights and undertones um and i just think he's totes adorbs tote totes totes adorbs um how am i making this i need a vacation (laughs) 
this is Julie's owl. It is the most realistic looking owl. The one before I made with the other face was Lisa's. The brown one, the gray one was Alicia's. I don't know. It just all is blending together into one giant DIY. Um, we do have lots more things to show you for the party. We haven't even begun. Um, and then, of course, the actual party, the planning and that stuff. I'm glad to share with you, too. So this is the what I said was what when you think of an owl perhaps you think of this owl to me this reminded me of the most traditional looking owl you know not how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop Mr. Owl type of person but like a like a legit if I don't know I don't know barn owl regular I don't know just like a regular owl I don't know he looks regular <laughs> I'm actually talking to you like my sister Julie would be talking to me. I don't know. He looks regular. Um, but I just thought that he was uh, super cute. Again, the most realistic to me looking owl um, he's got. And also my favorite paint job of all the ones that I did. He's got little white shoulders and dark wings. Um, he's got different colored feathers and his feet are a different color most of the drawings that I saw like when owls sit a lot of times you don't see their feet it depends on what they're sitting on um, like if they're sitting and holding onto a branch sometimes you could see their talons but um, if they're sitting down flat sometimes their belly fur or fur feathers cover their feet so this one was cute because his the little drawing had his little feet his little um, he had these like sort of big eyebrows that blend into his ears. He was just so much fun. He's just like my funnest thing to draw. He really was. And I think he came out the best. I don't know, save the best for last. Should we do that? Now, if you're a party guest of mine and you're watching this video, don't hate on the fact that Julie got the best owl. Julie, if you're watching this, don't get a big head that you got the best owl. I'm just saying. <laughs> but honestly, in all fairness, everybody got one that kind of, I feel like that kind of matches them. So it kind of works out really well. Um, the eyes on this was, I don't know. I just, I'll stop talking. I'll, I will eventually. <laughs> I want to just put on some like owl music and just let you listen to it in the background. Um, but I also want to be here to show you that just a little bit of like, you make his brown uh, eyebrows just to add a little black at the top, just to highlight it, just to make it darken it. Actually, technically that's low lighting it just to give it some dimension. The same thing with around his eyes. You know, you want to give him his, like the dark feathers under his eyes, but then when you highlight his eyeballs, then you get like oomph and you have his dark beak. But if you add a little highlight there and a little highlight there, it really makes it pop. And I know we talked a lot about like painting lessons and I'm not going to do any, I feel like I probably won't do any specific painting lessons like that but I feel like I give you guys a little bit of lessons each time when you lay when you lay a light color highlight next to a dark low light shadow or whatever then it really does give it dimension um, but if you can refer to your photograph or your inspiration piece uh, to get that then that's definitely the way to go that's my recommendation for you okay now um yeah, I'm just, I like, I feel like I'm fascinating myself. <laughs> he also uh, didn't have, I mean, I didn't show you his back, but his back came out really cute as well. So I'm actually just going to show you a couple of different highlights with this and uh, me cutting out and, and, and stacking these other envelopes. I started to get a system down where I was cutting two envelopes at a time and I just had to trim some of the little dash lines. I know it's hard to see on the video, but there was just a very faint dash line that showed you where to cut. And when I cut two at a time, I might I had to go back to the second one underneath and just do a little bit of trimming. That was not a big deal. It was easier than trying to cut both of them separately, in my opinion. But you know, you do what works for you. And if you have little hands that know how to use scissors, they should, they should definitely be helping. Now, I just wanted to also show you that, um, like I mentioned, I figured out where everybody's bedroom was. I definitely um, wanted to personalize it to that level. Um, and then if you have a calligraphy marker, that's what I was getting to. If you have a calligraphy marker, I suggest you use it. I, of course, couldn't find mine. I did find it eventually, but um, 
you want to go ahead and make sure that you just add the dark lines to make it look like you're using a calligraphy pen if you want to be more true to the story I guess now I mentioned earlier that I used to have a heat gun and the best way that I found to heat the wax was with the heat gun um, but using this is fine just be careful as it starts to get to where there's a little, a little wick in it as it starts to get towards the top sometimes uh, fiery balls of wax can fall down but nothing detrimental and the reason I wanted to share this portion with you is if you noticed in the beginning when I was making Jane's and I tried to take the seal off a little too early this is how I did it when I got married um, I basically put the seal down on the wax I set it off to the side while I stuffed the next envelope and went on in that routine and there they are all done uh, I just absolutely love them. I've gotten positive feedback from all of my guests. I'm so excited. Tomorrow's the day. So if you're listening to this, it's just a few hours till I pick up my sisters from the airport. If you guys have any questions, give thumbs up, share. You guys know all the things, okay? Here's Alicia. This is so cute. I don't even want to open it. Look. Ooh. Is that a knot? What the hell was she thinking? Slide it off. take the paint off this thinking thing. Oh, there we go. Oh. Who's out there? Clear. Still? Waiting for abs? Hang that right there. Ta -da. Ooh. Hook for it and everything. Oh, that is a nice seal. I don't want to break it. Mm. Don't forget it. 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 Don't forget So cute, so cute. July 11th? What am I supposed to do for the three days? What the hell, my dude? Totally cute. But I'm telling McGonagall you um, forged her name. Sorry. That's against the law. Even for wizards. Some stuff's already crossed off. So honest, so when parents are reminded that your first year is now allowed to own their own broomsticks. 
Well, then I'm not going to Hogwarts. All right. It's very, very cute. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm going to save it forever. But I have to read the equipment stuff. But this is getting too long to send via text. All right. Bye. And as always, you guys, take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye. And happy Harry Potter party day. Whoop, whoop. Bye.